I'm not sure what day I'll put this up, but it very well could be a Friday, possibly a Thursday. You never know. But I do feel the need to explain what happened yesterday on the Vault channel. And uh, I think I'm going to have to make some changes going forward with the Vault channel as well. But I put up a video on Thursday of this week that talks about the art dealer who bought something from somebody really, really cheap. And they may have known it was worth a lot more. So that reminded me of the story I did about my belt buckle that I found that I've told before. And I thought that video was still on my main channel when I shot the video involving the art dealer. And so I referenced it in the video and said, I'll put a link to the video below. Turns out that I'd pulled that video down a long time ago. And I'm not sure why, but I had pulled it down. And I had put that up as the 100,000 subscriber video. And I had promised that I had a good story for that moment. But also, I was going to give away some books. And so when I re-looked at the video now and realized I've got to repost it on the Vault channel so that people can reference it, I thought, well, I, I need to chop out the part about the contest because the contest is over, obviously. I crossed 100,000 subscribers a long, long time ago, three years ago. So I chopped it out, and I edited it. And as I was rendering the video, uh, Adobe Premiere says, uh, you already have a video with this description. Do you want to overwrite it or write a second video? And I said, overwrite it, meaning that it should have then deleted the video from that one spot and put in the new video on top of it. So when I was done with it, I uploaded the video. I thought nothing of it. At 7.03, when the video went live, I started getting notes from people saying that they wanted a free book because I just crossed 100,000 subscribers uh, three years ago. And now in the description of the video, I'd said this video is three years old. Um, and in the video, I said I crossed 100,000 subscribers, which of course happened three years ago. Uh, but a bunch of people didn't get that. So I thought, okay, that's weird, but that must mean that that section that I chopped out is somehow still in there. So I went in, I removed the video, <laughs> re-rendered it, and re-uploaded it, and the re-upload still had the section in it, and I don't know how that happened, so I went and checked, and the video on my computer was missing that. So I don't know. It very well could be completely operator error on my part, but I literally, I'm like, okay. So I went in and deleted all the videos from all the places that they could be found, and I'd saved one version of it, and I re-rendered it minus the contest and uh, put that up with a different name, a different title, because I think that may have been part of it. And I'm not going to get too heavily into this because some of this is just suspicions on my part. All I know is I finally got the video back up missing the section regarding the contest that was confusing people. And so uh, I had several people contact me. Hey, Steve, I was watching a video of yours and it disappeared. And I said, yeah, I'm having technical issues. Sorry about that. It'll go back up. I did repost it finally as I had to because I referenced it in the video on the main channel. So I had to do that. But while I was doing that, I also got some very, very strange comments again. Uh, I had one person go, uh, you don't have 100,000 subscribers. You've only got 19,000 or whatever I've got on the Vault channel. I don't even know. Um, and I had several people uh, comment. And, and unfortunately, this happens on many of my videos on the Vault channel where people will say, um, where's the Canadian robot lady? Uh, where's the $100 bill? Uh, Steve, this happened two years ago. And in the video description, it'll say this video is from two years ago. And I had a conversation last night with a gentleman on Facebook that I'm friends with who told me, he goes, I fast forward to the end to see what the copyright date is. I said, well, why don't you just check the description below the video? And he goes, I think it's easier for me to fast forward to the end. I'm like, whatever works for you. But <laughs> it says right in the description below the video, video from 2019 or 2016 or whatever it might be. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter what I say or do because there were clearly about a dozen people who thought that was a brand new video, thought I just crossed 100,000 subscribers, and thought I was promising free books. So I'm actually going to honor all the people who sent me the note because I think they were being honest. I think they honestly thought that that was a brand new video, despite the fact it made no sense if you actually thought about it. But I, you know something? If, if I'm trying to communicate a thought and I don't get the thought across, then I guess I have to just say that's, that's you know, failure to communicate is my problem. So... The bigger problem here, of course, is the fact that so many videos I put up on this channel confuse people. And I thought, well, on the main channel, I have the main channel on the Vault channel. I have an introduction that says, here's what the Vault channel is all about. Nobody ever checks that. 
Also, in the description of the video, as I mentioned, I say the date. Nobody checks that. If I put up a video right now and said, hey, Jimmy Carter was elected president, and I'm wearing a, a, a plaid coat with lapels this wide, and my hair is feathered, would you really go, hey, Steve, I think that happened a long time ago? I mean, <laughs> so uh, I think going forward, I'm just going to stop putting up old videos. I, 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 it's, it's not worth it. because I, I had the same gentleman who told me he fast forwards to the end. He goes, you could reshoot something and put it at the front end about how the video is old. And number one, I could. It would take more time than I want to put into this. But number two, some people wouldn't catch that either. I've discovered that I could probably have it flashing on the screen saying, old video, old video. And people go, I just saw that brand new video you put up, and it seems to be. So I don't think there's a solution to the problem other than to just stop posting old videos. So the videos that have nothing to do with time or current events, such as me taking my canoe out to turn up rock, I think I can leave that on the Vault channel because it's not going to confuse people. Uh, when I take my drive, my, my Viper for a drive, I don't think it'll confuse people. Although I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone responds to a video I shot in the summertime going, hey, Steve, it's summertime in the video, but, but, but it's, it's, it's winter here in, in America. What's, what's going on there? I've, I've gotten comments like that too once in a while. But So going forward, I'll still do videos like this one. I'll do videos like the hikes in the Estevant Pines or at the Douglas Houghton Preserve, that kind of thing. But I'm not going to repost old videos. So old videos that I did back in the first, second, third years of my channel that are no longer on my main channel, I, I have them. I'm going to keep them, but um, I'm not going to continue reposting them. And and I just, it's just, it's, it's, it's just such a hassle. I'm sorry. It's just such a hassle. So now that you're here and I've already wasted, whoa. <laughs> Where does the time go? I told you last week I was going to have a big announcement on this week's rant video. And I was going to tell you about going out to California to attend the Institute for Justice retreat. But I did a full video on the main channel about that, put that up Monday or Tuesday. So I'm not going to talk about that today. But that was the announcement I was going to make. But it's already old news now. I will tell you, though, I did the video about trespassing. And, and what does trespassing mean? And I had a whole bunch of people say, but you still can't trespass on public property. There's no such thing. And I cited the statute in the video from Michigan that says, here's what trespassing is. And people go, yeah, but that's just for private property. No, it just, it's for all property. All property. It just says the property of another. So if it's your property, you can't be trespassed on your own property. Are you on the property of another? It's not yours? Yes, you can be trespassed. So I had several people go, but Steve, explain to me a situation where you could possibly be trespassed off, off of public property. I said, the library closes at 9 o'clock. At 9.01, you're still in there. They go, get out. You go, no, no. I pay taxes. This is my library. I'm staying. Cops will come and haul you out. Guess what they're going to charge you with? Quite possibly trespassing. Uh, and I had several people go, well, Steve, obviously. <laughs> obviously is an example that works. Okay, so there you go. I did the story about the robot delivery things they got going now, where there's autonomous drone type robots that, that, that they're not flying around, but they're, well, those are coming too, but the type that drive around to deliver pizza, for instance. And so there's going to be these delivery bots going around in some cities autonomously, meaning that there's nobody escorting them. They're just driving down the street or the sidewalk holding something that they're delivering. And the article said that the people who make these are concerned that they will encounter displaced workers who might attack them in some kind of Luddite thing. And um, I said, what are the odds you're going to encounter the actual worker they displaced? Like, uh, so, so a guy who applied for a job at Domino's was told, we don't need to hire you because we've, re we've replaced that job with a robot. As he's walking home, he encounters the very robot that displaced him. I said, I think that's kind of highly unlikely, but I, I, you know, I, I, I'm more concerned about vandals. I had somebody respond to that and say, Steve, I can't believe how out of touch you are to think that, that displaced workers won't encounter the robots that displaced them. And then the person wrote a second comment and said, and let me guess, you're the kind of jerk who thinks that if a hungry person stole that pizza, it would be wrong. <laughs> Yes, I'm the kind of jerk who thinks that theft is wrong. Can you imagine that? I, what, what, a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a bad person I am to think that theft is wrong. I didn't say that, though. 
I didn't say that, but they extrapolated from me saying it was, it seemed high on the improbability list that the person displaced by this robot will encounter that robot. But they extrapolated that into, and you probably think it's wrong for a hungry person to steal food. What's wrong with you, you jerk? <laughs> I got an email from a guy, and by the way, I've mentioned before, if you have something interesting you want to tell me, you can, you can send me a note and say, Steve, I think this is interesting. You might want to know this if you don't know it already. But the problem I have is I actually get notes from people very, very condescendingly who will say, Steve, apparently you don't know. And they'll tell me something I know. And that's happened two or three times in the last week. One of which was a guy who goes, Steve, he goes, you keep referring to a devil's advocate as, 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 as somebody who just argues with anything. And I'm not aware that I've ever done that. Devil's advocate is somebody who just simply takes the other side of a conversation to prove a point. Uh, I refer to people who argue for stupidity's sake as contrarians. There are people, I know contrarians. I know two or three people that I could walk up to and say anything, and they'll immediately take the opposite side. So I could go up to them and say, uh, you know, yesterday was hot out. No, not where I was. You're the same place I was. Yeah, but it's only 85 degrees. That's not hot. But if I'd walked up to them and said, yesterday is cold out, they'd go, what, are you crazy? It's 85 degrees out. Like, contrarians argue with, so you say this, they say this. You say this, they say this. And you can predict that. That's a contrarian. I don't recall ever calling somebody who disagrees with me for no reason a devil's advocate. I've, heard, I've, I've said, you know, to play devil's advocate, you could say such and such. But I've never, so I had a guy send me a very, very lengthy email explaining to me what a devil's advocate really is. And, I, and I mean, I'm talking literally. And, and if you look into it, there's actually a person whose role it was, they called the devil's advocate, and it has to do with the Catholic Church. I'm not going to get heavily into it because I'm not an expert on it, but I'm aware of it. And so this guy starts explaining to me this because I apparently didn't know that. And I've, I've never understood why people jump to a conclusion that I don't know something, um, because I do. And, and the other one I got was really strange. But I was talking about the case out of Texas that the Institute for Justice just took up on appeal. And I said that the judge should let this go to a jury and let the jury decide. And I had somebody go, uh, Steve, you apparently don't know this. Judges decide matters of law. Juries only decide matters of fact. So to let this go to a jury and let them decide the matters of law would be wrong. And the guy wrote, sorry, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Literally, day one or day two of civil procedure in law school that I took 33 years ago, judges decide the law, juries decide the facts. When I said a judge should let it go to the jury, I was saying that the judge should rule as a matter of law that it can go to a jury, i.e., discarding the legal defense of qualified immunity, or in that case, is sovereign immunity. And so when I say a judge should let it go to a jury, I'm saying that they should let the jury decide the facts. I didn't say let the jury decide the law. I never said that. I'm sorry, Steve, but apparently you don't know. Judges decide the law. Juries decide facts. That's just the way it is. Um... Really? <laughs> you know what's crazy? And I'm, I'm going to make a statement here. And it's just, I'm, a, I'm pointing this out. The people who complain about my interpretation of the law are never attorneys. It's always non-attorneys. And one of my favorite ones that I got recently was when I mentioned the bit about trespass. And I said, you can be trespassed off of public property. If you do wrong things there, if you do something that you're not allowed to do there, you can be trespassed on. And I had this one person arguing and arguing and arguing with me. And that person actually said, Steve, any first year law student would laugh at you because you don't know anything about the law. Weirdly, I don't care what a first year law student thinks. I'm more concerned about what lawyers would think. And lawyers never correct me on these things. Not a single lawyer weighed in and said, Steve, you can't trespass somebody off public property because lawyers know you can, that you can be trespassed off public property. And then I guess I should end on this note. I did the story about how the VA denied a man's uh, payments 
because they said he had heart attack, but not an emergency. Uh, they, they, they paid it as an emergency, but heart attacks don't qualify. And so the headline was something to the effect of VA declares heart attack, not an emergency or something like that. And most people understood what that meant. And I got a guy who wrote me this lengthy note and he goes, Steve, apparently you don't know this, but I work, I work in hospitals and, um, heart attack is an emergency. And um, if this had been handled properly, the VA would have paid it. I suspect that was just a poorly worded, a poorly worded letter. <laughs> oh? <laughs> Literally, the guy understood every word of the story and then wanted to point out to me that what I'd said was correct, but I got it wrong. It was a poorly worded letter and they should have paid the claim. Yes, that was the point of the whole story. That, that, watch the video. I say that the man had a heart attack, which seems like an emergency to me, and they probably should have paid the claim. And telling him his heart attack was not an emergency was poorly worded. Um, and the guy goes, Steve, they should have paid the claim, but the letter was just poorly worded. <laughs> it's exactly what I said. So I don't know which I, I actually find more frustrating. <laughs> when people go, Steve, a first-year law student would laugh at you for that when they wouldn't if they knew what they're doing. Or somebody who goes, uh, Steve, uh, you got the story completely wrong. Here's what really happened, and they tell me exactly what I did in the video. I go, okay. So... I'm going to end it there. My, my clock already ran out, which means that I've been talking for too long. So going forward, I apologize. There might not be new uploads as frequently as there were on this channel. Uh, like I said, we'll play with this as we go forward. But I'm going to put up more of this kind of stuff right here where I'm just chatting. And I don't see these videos being on the main channel, uh, but I see them perfectly fine here. Uh, but if you have any feedback, questions, or comments, please feel free to put it below, especially if you seem to think that a first-year law student will laugh all day long at me for talking about my Vault channel being a separate channel than my main channel because anybody would know that the Vault channel is, in fact, a separate channel from the main channel. And the fact that you don't think it is is crazy. So I'm just making up stuff here. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.